In the dim light of dawn, engines roar across an English airfield. A formation of silver giants awakens wings glinting beneath the cold European sun, their propellers cutting through the mist like the blades of history itself. As crews scramble aboard, laughter fades into tense silence. For these men, every mission could be their last. Their aircraft? The Boeing B-17, a name that struck terror into the hearts of the Axis and inspired awe among allies. It wasn't just another bomber, it was a flying fortress, a metallic beast of the skies that could endure unimaginable punishment and still make it home. During the darkest years of World War II, when victory seemed uncertain and the world teetered on the edge of chaos, this machine of steel, sweat, and sacrifice became a symbol of endurance. But how did this legendary aircraft come to be? What secret technologies made it so unstoppable? And why, decades later, does the sound of its engines still echo in our collective memory? This is the untold story of the B-17 Flying Fortress, the bomber that reshaped the art of war, defined a generation of aviators, and proved that courage could indeed take flight. The story of the B-17 begins long before it ever dropped a single bomb. In the early 1930s, the U.S. Army Air Corps foresaw a future where control of the skies would decide the fate of nations. Boeing's engineers, inspired by both ambition and necessity, took on the monumental challenge of creating a bomber that could fly farther, carry more, and survive longer than anything before. The project was born in secrecy and skepticism. Few believed a four-engine bomber was even feasible, it was too large, too expensive, too advanced for its time. But Boeing's design team, led by E. Gifford Emery and Edward Curtis Wells, pushed forward. The result was the Model 299, sleek, formidable, and armed to the teeth. When it first took flight in July 1935, the world witnessed something extraordinary, a bomber that could reach speeds of 250 miles per hour, travel over 2,000 miles, and carry over two tons of bombs. The Seattle Times journalist who saw the prototype dubbed it the Flying Fortress, noting its impressive array of defensive guns, a name Boeing quickly trademarked. But fate struck a cruel blow. During a demonstration flight, the prototype crashed due to human error, killing two crew members. Rivals mocked Boeing, claiming the dream was over. Yet, the Army was impressed enough to order more, and Boeing refined the design. Out of that tragedy emerged an icon, one that would soon take on a world at war. At its core, the B-17 was an engineering marvel, not because it was the most advanced plane of the war, but because it perfectly balanced strength, simplicity, and survivability. Its airframe was designed to absorb punishment and still hold together. Stories abound of B-17s returning to base with wings shredded, tails half-missing, and engines destroyed, yet somehow still flying. The four right are 1820 Cyclone engines, each producing over 1,200 horsepower, gave it power and reliability unmatched by many of its contemporaries. The aircraft's 13.50 caliber Browning machine guns, mounted in strategic positions, turned it into a flying porcupine, spewing lead in every direction against German fighters. Its internal bomb bay could carry up to 8,000 pounds of ordnance on short missions, and it featured innovations such as self-sealing fuel tanks and armor plating around vital areas. The real game-changer, however, was the Norden bombsite, a top-secret device that allowed bombardiers to hit targets with unprecedented precision from over 25,000 feet. To protect its technology, the U.S. government treated it like a weapon of mass secrecy. Bombardiers swore oaths never to let it fall into enemy hands. Combined with formation flying, tight groups of fortresses covering each other in defensive fire, the B-17 turned the skies over Europe into a deadly ballet of coordination and courage. The Flying Fortress first saw combat in 1941, but its true trial came over the skies of Nazi-occupied Europe. From the sprawling bases of East Anglia, hundreds of B-17s lifted off in tight formation, their silver bodies glinting like daggers in the morning sun. Their targets were deep inside the heart of the Third Reich ball-bearing factories, rail hubs, oil fields, and munitions plants. Each mission was a test of endurance and faith. 
German anti-aircraft artillery, known as FLAC, filled the air with shrapnel clouds. Enemy fighters like the BF-109 and FW-190 swooped in from the sun, guns blazing. The losses were staggering. In missions like the 1943 Schweinfurt Regensburg raid, nearly half of the bombers never returned. Yet, despite the horror, crews climbed back into their aircraft the next day. They knew their task wasn't just about bombs, it was about breaking the backbone of Nazi industry. The psychological warfare was as real as the physical one for the Germans, the sight of endless waves of B-17s meant the inevitable approach of defeat. As historian Stephen Ambrose wrote, the Flying Fortress brought the war home to Hitler. It wasn't perfection bombs often missed, and innocent lives were lost, but it marked the beginning of a new kind of warfare, one fought above the clouds, where technology and tenacity collided in a storm of fire and steel. While the B-17 was the pride of the U.S. Army Air Forces, it wasn't without rivals. The B-24 Liberator, produced by Consolidated Aircraft, boasted longer range and higher payload capacity, but lacked the fortress's durability and grace. Many pilots who flew both swore that the B-17 was the better aircraft to bring them home alive. Across the Atlantic, the British fielded the Avro Lancaster, a powerful night bomber capable of carrying the enormous Grand Slam bombs that destroyed Germany's infrastructure. The Germans, by contrast, failed to produce a comparable heavy bomber, focusing instead on fast, agile fighters and medium bombers like the Heinkel He-111 and the Junkers Ju-88. In the Pacific theater, the B-17's shorter range eventually saw it replaced by the B-29 Superfortress, a direct descendant with pressurized cabins and remote-controlled gun turrets. But the B-17's spirit lived on in every bomber that followed. It set the standard, not just in performance, but in philosophy. It wasn't about overwhelming power, it was about resilience, teamwork, and faith in the machine that carried you through hell and back. Behind every B-17 were men ordinary young Americans turned into legends of the sky. Pilots, navigators, gunners, engineers each with a job, each with a dream of coming home. They were 19, 20, maybe 22 years old, flying missions where the odds of survival were sometimes lower than a coin toss. Names like Memphis Bell, 909, and Ye Old Pub became immortal, representing the bravery of entire crews who faced death with steel nerves and frozen hands. Inside the aircraft, conditions were brutal, oxygen masks froze, the noise was deafening, and frostbite was a constant enemy. Yet camaraderie thrived. They were brothers in aluminum, bonded by shared fear and defiance. Ground crews worked tirelessly, patching holes, changing engines, and painting nose art that brought a touch of humanity to a machine built for destruction. And behind them all, thousands of factory workers, many of them women riveted and welded each panel with precision and pride. Rosie the Riveter was not just a poster, she was the backbone of the fortress. Together, they built not just an airplane, but a legend. When the guns finally fell silent in 1945, and peace returned to a scarred world, the B-17's purpose was fulfilled. Over 12,000 were built, and though many were scrapped after the war, a few remained, serving as transports, firefighting aircraft, and aerial surveyors. Yet their legacy was far greater than their numbers. The lessons learned from the Flying Fortress influenced every bomber that followed, from the B-52 Strata Fortress to the stealthy B-2 Spirit. It revolutionized the concept of strategic bombing, proving that control of the skies could shape the outcome of wars. More importantly, it left behind an emotional legacy of courage, sacrifice, and innovation. Today, only a handful of airworthy B-17s remain, lovingly restored and flown at airshows. When one takes off, its engines rumbling like the heartbeat of history, the crowd falls silent. They are not just watching an airplane, they are witnessing a ghost, a reminder of a time when the world's fate was decided by men and machines soaring above the clouds. The B-17 Flying Fortress stands as one of the greatest achievements of human ingenuity and perseverance. It was more than metal, rivets, and engines, it was a testament to the will of a generation that refused to surrender to tyranny. 
Each mission told a story of courage, each survivor carried memories written in smoke and fire. Its wings bore not only bombs but the hopes of millions who dreamed of freedom. As we look back today, the question remains, what made it truly legendary, the machine, or the men who flew it? Perhaps the answer lies somewhere in the sky, in the echo of those four engines that once thundered over Europe. The Flying Fortress reminds us that history is not just about victories or losses, it's about endurance, unity, and the human spirit that dares to rise above the storm.